May I speak to the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. My dad, he's been a um, very passionate fisherman his whole life. And there are many, many fishing stories that I enjoy to share about him. But the most profound story came late in his fishing career. See, he was fishing for the first time in St. Simon's in a new boat that belonged to my brother-in-law. And my dad accidentally stepped off the back of the boat into the bay. Now, normally my dad was fishing from his flats boat, which is very, very close to the water and very easy to get in and out of. But my brother-in-law's boat was a Boston whaler. It was a big bay boat that sits super high off of the water. <clears throat> and the currents and the tides are quite strong in St. Simon's. My dad, being incapable of climbing the sides of the boat, tried stepping onto the propeller. But when he lifted his leg, his shin got caught on the propeller, tearing open it like tearing open his skin like paper. He began bleeding profusely into the water. Now, the coast of St. Simon's Island is notorious for shark sightings. The fact that my dad was now bleeding out into the salt water certainly was not helping his situation. So he tried to position his foot again on the prop, but he slipped again and he tore the other leg open. He tried to climb up numerous times, but, but every time he slipped back into the cold water, you see, the current was moving too strong, and soon he became very tired after numerous attempts of trying to climb up the engine. It was all he could do just to hold on for dear life. Now, little did my father know, but at the front of the boat on the port side, there was a ladder that went straight up into the bow of the boat. Had he known this, he could have easily made his way around and climbed right back into the boat to safety. But this was not my dad's boat. And he was blind to the existence of such a life-saving ladder. Now, my father is a huge fan of Steve Earle. He's a country singer. And one of the lines he used to quote from often is a song called Tom Ames' Prayer. The line goes like this. And you know I ain't never prayed before, but it always seemed to me, if praying is the same as begging, Lord, I don't take no charity. Yet on that fair, crisp autumn day, desperately clinging onto a boat, caught in the grips of a current, taking him helpless out to sea, getting weaker and weaker by the minute with the loss of blood chumming the waters all around him, my father said that he cried out from the very depths of his being, a prayer begging God to save him. I imagine that it sounded something like, that of the deepest cry of blind Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Which brings us to our gospel story and our lesson this morning. One of my favorite biblical characters of all time, blind Bart. He's the real star of this passage. So I guess we're just going to have to wait to the end of my homily to, to find out what happened to my poor dad hanging on to the back of that boat. See, I love Bartimaeus because like my dad and like us, all Bart can do is beg and be blind. And in this humble and broken state, Bart teaches us a precious truth about God's kingdom. Where the blind can see and those who can see are made blind. And I'm not talking about a physical blindness like Bartimaeus. I'm talking about a spiritual blindness for Jesus spoke to his critics after healing the blind man at the pool of Bethesda, saying, For judgment I came into the world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. You see, every day, every moment of every day, we are given the chance to see a glimpse of Jesus. Or we're given the chance to remain lost in the darkness of the world, consumed by its troubles and our own fears. It's as if we've 
taken our paintbrushes and we've dipped them into, in, in, into our own broken and shattered souls and then painted the face of God, our neighbor, and ourselves in such a distorted and blurred vision. But Blind Bart is here this morning to teach us how to dream. He is our blind guide out of the darkness and into the way, the truth, and the life. To show us the light of the Father as revealed in Jesus Christ. For it is Jesus who says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now it's also important for us to to recognize the context here of Bart's encounter with Jesus. You see, it takes place right before the triumphal entry into Jerusalem in Mark's gospel. That faded moment where Christ enters the holy city, turning his face completely now towards his passion and ultimately his crucifixion. The son of David riding on a donkey as the crowds cast off their cloaks and lay down the palm leaves shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blind Bart recognizes, I believe by faith, that the light of the cosmos is passing him by and he will not be silenced. He cries out for Jesus with a reckless abandonment using the messianic title, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now primarily the title son of David is more than a statement of just physical genealogy. It's a messianic title. When people referred to Jesus as the son of David, they meant that he was the long-awaited deliverer, the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. The son of David has come down from the mountain of the transfiguration And has set his face like flint toward Jerusalem. Son of David, have mercy on me. Is the cry of Adam and Eve standing naked and ashamed in the garden. Son of David, have mercy on me. Is the story story and the cry of Israel in exile. Son of David, have mercy on me. Is the cry of my father clinging to his life. On the back of a boat floating out to sea. Son of David, have mercy on me is the cry of us. The human race lost in the nightmare and darkness of death surrounds us. And this morning, Son of David, have mercy on me is the cry of blind Bart. Touching the heart of the Messiah, causing him to stand still. As Mark writes... Stand still. It's a very odd expression, but we've seen it before in Mark's gospel, back where the hemorrhaging woman touched the hem of his garment and was immediately healed. Jesus, when feeling the virtue flow from his body, stood still. It seems that in the midst of all of these broken human bodies pressing against his divine, Jesus stands still like the eye of the storm bringing forth from his virtue a fountain of living waters. And just like the woman, in his stillness, Jesus calls for Bart to come to him. And what happens next? Well, it's the stuff of hopes and dreams as expressed in the action of one lowly blind beggar living in the very gutters of life. The passage says, so throwing off his cloak, Bart sprang up and came to Jesus. Let me say that again. So throwing off his cloak, Bart sprang up and came to Jesus. Now that will preach. Bart, when he hears his master, when he hears his Messiah, when he hears his Lord calling for him, throws off his cloak. Bart throws off his disability. He throws off his blindness. He throws off his lowly position as a beggar. Bart throws off his identity of being nobody from nowhere, an outsider, a dirty blind beggar who can only be beg and blind. Be bind and bleg. Be bind and blind and beg. It's a tongue twister. 
He throws off everything that was holding him down. All of his pain, all of his sorrows, all of his past mistakes, and all of his shame. And he springs up and he comes to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And Bart replies, my teacher, my rabbi, my Lord, let me see again. And Jesus says, go. Your faith has made you well. And immediately Bart regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. Bishop Michael Curry says that dreams are love's visions. The boundless faith that the world can be remade to look more like what God hoped for his creation. You see, Bart is a dreamer who had nothing to give to Jesus but his blindness and his begging. Yet from his hope, from his faith, his dreams sprang. An amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Now back to my poor dad. Bleeding profusely, clinging to his very life on the back of a boat, floating aimlessly out to sea. As he tells the story, he cried out. He begged for God to save him. The next thing he remembered was awaking from this hellish nightmare miraculously laying limp in the bottom of the boat and looking up what appeared to him to be an angel. Like waking from a nightmare and coming into a dream. But it was a local crabber who saw my dad's boat floating aimlessly in the current and attached his skiff, towed him back to safety. Looking down upon my dad laying belly up, covered in blood, he saw my dad smiling upon what he thought, what he believed was his salvation. Now do not try to convince my dad otherwise. This man was an angel who rescued him and got him to the hospital where his wounds were stitched up and mom could take him home and tell him that he would never go fishing alone again. (laughs) It just so happened that this good Samaritan, that this local crabber, after bringing my dad to safety, disappeared before revealing his true identity. And as to how my father made it back into the boat, well, that remains a mystery. He doesn't remember. But my dad believes to this day that it was divine intervention, that it was the work of Jesus in hearing his desperate cry, lifting him up and into safety, and restoring his life. So in the same spirit, of my father's desperate cry for salvation, and in the reckless dreams of blind Bart, may we too recognize that we can, all that we can bring to God is our blindness and our begging. But isn't that usually when God does his greatest work? In the words of one of my favorite hymns, let us approach the altar this morning with the boldness with the faith, with the imagination of Bartimaeus, who cried out, Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, do not pass me by. Amen.